Hello, hello, hello everyone. Hello guys, how are you on today? Guess what time it is? It's story time with three stars. I'm so, so excited. I have an awesome story for us on today. But before we get started with that story, I'd like to greet everyone all over the world. I'd like to say hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and to some good night. Someone is going to bed somewhere in the world, but guess what? You are just in time for story time with Miss Dora. Shout outs to all of you that are celebrating a birthday on today. Happy birthday to you. Today's story we're going to be reading is part four of the Underground Railroad. Remember, this month is Black History Month, and we are reading all Black history books or African American books on this month. So today's part four we're reading is the Underground Railroad, and this is written by Ellen Levine, illustrated by Larry Johnson. So, moms, dads, nanas, papa, titis, uncles, cousins, go ahead on and have a seat while I read you a live story on today. I'm so, so excited. How long would you stay at a station? Let's turn the music down just a tad bit. How long could you stay at a station? That depended on how close the hunters were. It might be two or three o'clock in the morning when you arrive at a friend's house. Sometimes there was barely time for the new conductor to get dressed. You would climb into a wagon with fresh horses and speed away to the next station, 10 or 20 miles away. The conductor had to return home in time for breakfast. That was everything. That way everything looked normal. Conductors and station masters had to be very, very, very careful because often many of their neighbors didn't believe in helping fugitive slaves. Some even thought slavery was all right. Sometimes you might have to stay for a while at a station because you were sick. Sarah Backstreet was seven years old when a fugitive first came to her home. She held the lamp while her parents put medicine on his back. He was badly cut from having been whooped. It took two weeks before his wounds healed and he could travel to the next station. Other times you might stay and work for several, several days or several weeks or months. The station master would hire you to do different jobs around the farm and the house. There he go, he's injured. Oh. Story time. Story time with me. <clears throat> How long would the whole trip take? The Underground Railroad ran in a zigzag way. The tracks couldn't go in straight line because it would be too easy to catch the fugitive. Safety was very, very most important. Sometimes you had to head south to fool the hunters. They'd never think a runaway slave would go south. As soon as it was safe, you turn around and go back north. It took one man a year to get from Alabama to Cincinnati, Ohio. Other fugitives were luckier. On the board ship, it might only take two or three days to get to a free state. When was the last time of year to escape? Some people said summer, some said winter. If you traveled in summer, you didn't have to worry about the cold. The trees were green and there were lots and lots of berries and small animals for food. But it was also easier for the hunters to follow you. Winter, of course, could be the bitter cold, but there were good reasons for going then. The rivers were often frozen. You could cross them by walking on the ice. In the summer, you might have to find a boat. Many slaves ran away at Christmas. Their owners were busy going to parties. They might not notice for several, several days that a slave was missing that would give you a head start whether it was summer or winter certain days were better than others for escape saturday was best the newspaper wouldn't print the advertisement on sunday and so the owners couldn't tell everyone that you had ran off 
that also gave you a head start. Rather was summer or winter, you hope, for clear nights. Then you could look at the sky and follow the North Star. It pointed toward freedom. Who worked at the Underground Railroad? All kinds of people, blacks and whites and children and adults, women and men. There were Northerners and also some Southerners who thought slavery was wrong and decided to help the fugitive. Most of the people who helped were ordinary people, storekeepers, housewives, carpenters, ministers, and teachers. We don't remember their names today, but some conductors and station masters became very, very famous. Harriet Tubman was one. She had been a slave and escaped to the north, but she made, but she made trip after trip back to the south to help others escape. She was successful that a reward of $40,000 was once offered to anyone who captured her. No one ever did. That was an awesome story we read you on today. Short mini mini stories in our book, <coughs> The Underground Railroad. So guys, I enjoy reading you a short story on today. Take care. Remember, if you're not feeling well, always, always let someone know that you're not feeling well. And guess what? They would take really, really, really good care of you and always always make sure you're practicing safety first sanitizing your hands and wearing your mask well take care have an awesome awesome day remember if you're not smiling on today i hope once you see miss Storytime smile that you are smiling take care god bless you all see you on tomorrow